Notre Dame favored by four and a half at North Carolina. This is a 3.30 Eastern time kickoff on ABC. Yet another Friday special here. This is so beautiful. Friday's going to be a good day, guys. I really stress to you. I can't stress to you strong enough terms. You need to clear that schedule off because you got a big one at noon when the Iowa State and Texas. You got a big one at 3.30 in Notre Dame, North Carolina. You got Oregon playing in prime time. So this is great. And selfishly for us, we got that big Central Michigan bet at four o'clock Eastern time. So let's dive into this game. As I said, Notre Dame favored by four and a half. Oh boy. I think the spread surprised a lot of people. It surprises them right now. This thing opened around a touchdown and it's come down to four, four and a half. Notre Dame is sitting in a great position in terms of their season right now. They have not lost a game. They're already past the Clemson hurdle. And they are looking like a very strong playoff contender at the moment. But here's what they need. I noticed some people asking this week, do they need to win this game? Or, you know, can they afford to lose this one and do this and do that? You got to get rid of that stuff, man. You got to have a killer mentality. Like Notre Dame, maybe even independent of the fans and whatnot, like the Notre Dame program, and I'm not saying I've heard any players talking like that, they got to have a killer mentality. If they do, the fan base kind of adopts it anyway. Win every game. Just win every Go undefeated. That's your goal. Win every game. And I'll tell you another thing. If that's not enough to motivate you, think about this. Well, if you lose a game and you're still making the playoff, you may be playing Alabama in the first round versus playing a more winnable team in a more winnable matchup. So if you want to play for seeding, if that's where your motivation is, well, then think that way. But worry about winning every game. That would be my advice. Now, 60 Minutes. I was, If you're watching the entire show, 60 Minutes, I was talking about within the context of the Iron Bowl earlier today. It's such a long time. Football games last a long time. You can do a lot in the three and a half hours of real time that it takes to play most of these things. Boston College found this out. Boston College got up early on Notre Dame. I had a buddy who had picked that upset. You know, it was the week after the Clemson game, so everyone was calling that their upset alert. And Notre Dame was favored by 13 and a half. BC gets up early, and there come the text messages. People texting me saying, hey, this is actually going to happen. Not only did Notre Dame end up with 31 by halftime and ended up pulling away, that game was so long that people went from thinking Boston College is going to pull the upset to Notre Dame's up comfortably at the half. They stretch it in the third quarter, fourth quarter. Boston College is having to fight to score garbage time touchdowns to even get back within reach. That's how long that game is. It's like a whole season in one game. And I say that because that's exactly where this game could be headed. I heard Mac Brown, a North Carolina head coach, I heard him talking earlier this week, and he said, Something along the lines of, we know where Notre Dame is. Like, we know they're a playoff contender. I'm looking forward to this game because we get to figure out where we are. Well, that's a good question. Where is North Carolina? They've been a hard team, even for the fan base. You Tar Heel fans know exactly what I'm talking about. Your team's been a hard team to nail down this year. There have been times, you know, speaking of Boston College, when North Carolina played Boston College, I thought that was a game that they were going to unload. And they didn't. It did just flat. Whatever reason, you can name a million of them. They just didn't. And so you got to be careful here for obvious reasons. North Carolina is not holding Notre Dame under 30. They're, I don't think they have any illusions of doing that. Um, you guys in Tar Heel country, you've watched your defense, and so you know what the limitations are there. That's not the motivation, or that's not, rather, the confidence. That's not where it's inspired from anyone who's leaning North Carolina to win this game. They're leaning North Carolina because they think they can name the score. They think they can run the score up. So you're not holding Notre Dame under 30. Well, how high above 30 can you score? I mean, can you... Can you avoid having a game that's played in the 20s or 30s? I think that's your only way. Because I can tell you they're probably going to get theirs. And so how do you steal some possessions? How do you make sure you're consistently scoring? And that leads me to this next question. How do you score in general? Because I don't know how many of you have watched a lot of North Carolina. You probably, again, you may just be a highlight watcher. You're not a North Carolina fan, and so you, you know, oh, they got a really good offense down there in Chapel Hill. I see uh, that, that Howell kid. What's his name? Sam Howell. I see him all the time throwing the ball all over the place. Well, that's in highlight culture, and he does throw the ball a lot. They do throw the ball a lot. they got a really good run game, and they have the ability to pop you in explosive runs too. They are right at or near the top of the conference and the country in explosive runs. Do you remember the Clemson-Notre Dame game? Because that's where they held Travis Etienne to, I think, 28 total yards, actually, rushing. And it was well under three yards per carry. I think it was like, they're, they're under three yards per carry. In fact, they're at 2.87 yards per carry on the season. That's getting it done defensively. 
So something's got to give there. Either they're a poser, which I can promise you they're not in terms of the run defense, and you're going to run all over them, or you're going to have to have Sam Howell shoulder maybe an inordinate amount of the load relative to what he's used to, and he's going to have to do it against probably the best defense that he will play all year and certainly will have played all year. This is where I worry really about North Carolina because I don't I don't worry about them being able to be competitive. I, I don't think they're going to get out-athleted badly. It's not going to be that. It's going to be when you get one of your fastballs taken away, when you get one of your best pitches taken away, and I've seen times this year against inferior competition where you just appear to not have a good change up and you don't have a really good slider. It's once they take it away, maybe we can get by, maybe we can sneak by a team like Boston College, but I mean, we do not have it in our bag of tools right now. Well, if Notre Dame, which is one of the best teams in America, if they're taking away that fastball and then they're saying, all right, well, you're going to have to beat us with one leg here. I don't know that you can do it. And I'll look on the other side too, though, with Notre Dame. Like, I don't think this is a game. There's no excuse, I'll put it this way, for this game to fall totally on the shoulders of Ian Book. A lot of a lot of his overall legend, you know, when the book is written on him, no pun intended, it'll stem from that Clemson game. Because I think he played the best game I've ever seen him play in the biggest moment. Um, I'm not saying he carried the whole load, but he played like he was ready to. There's no reason he should have to play that way here. They should be able to run the ball effectively. I mean, they should gash North Carolina. They should have really good success running the ball. But you don't run the ball when you're trying to keep up and you're down two or three touchdowns. And that's kind of the situation you hope for if you're North Carolina. Maybe not a three-touchdown lead. You'd love it. It's not realistic. But you wonder to yourself, how do we make them that uncomfortable? How do we stagger them in the early portions of this game to where Ian Book's having to be the one to beat us? Now, he's capable of it, but you would much rather have that as the scenario than just them leaning on you all afternoon, all evening and night, because you know how that ends eventually. So you get maybe a couple three knots early, maybe force turnover, special teams pops them, but whatever you got to do, you need to control it early so that it becomes a game that Notre Dame doesn't necessarily want it to be. Let's take a look at the cops or capsule here, rather, Colin. I don't know, know what in the world a capsule is, but a capsule is this. It is the Vegas number and our number combined right next to each other so you can see Notre Dame's favored by four and a half by Vegas, and we agree. I mean, we've got Notre Dame minus four, so really tight lines this week with all the games that we're predicting. I uh, am kind of on the other side, though. In fact, I'm not only going to take Notre Dame to win, I'm kind of confident in the cover. It's not going to be an official bet. I'm not putting any money on this, but I'm overriding by half a point. It's not a big leap. I'm overriding our own system here a little bit. So I'm going to take Notre Dame to win, and I will take Notre Dame to cover there. It's a game. They need to establish a killer mentality in and display it if they already have it.